What's up, Extreme Family? We're here at the dock in front of our boat. Today we're not gonna go out, but we're actually gonna give you a how-to video for high-speed trolling for Wahoo. We're gonna show you the tackle that we use, the techniques that we use, the lures that we use, how we rig our rods, how we do everything from point A to point B till we get the fish on the boat. And we're doing this at the request of some subscribers that have been asking us how do we set up our re rods and reels. So we're here at the house. I'm gonna take you to the rigging station now and I'm gonna go through everything so that you can learn and be proactive in catching Wahoo using the high speed trolling method. All right guys, welcome to the rigging station. And here we're gonna show you how we put this magic together. We have this wind down leader with Dacron fitted into the monofilament line. This is a 150 pound test, 25 feet. And this is gonna go spliced in directly to our hollow core 130 pound braid that we're gonna wind on to our Shimano TLD 50. You can go with any 50 wide and above. So you can use an 80, a 130, you could do Tiagra, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I've opted to go with TLD because I've already lost multiple rod and reels and I'll explain how to prevent that from happening here shortly. So I'm, I've opted to go with a cheaper setup so that if something goes wrong, it doesn't hurt as much. So we're gonna wind the full 600 yards. Let me show you this. 600 yards of hollow core braid. I like using diamond braid, Mamoy, they're pretty good. Um, I don't know, I just, just you know, dependability, quality, it's, 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 it's never failed me, never. And um, I like to use the orange. You can use any color you like. I like it so that it's high vis. I can see it when I'm trolling and you're going 15, 20 knots in the water. So it's good to, to be able to see where your lines are and if at any moment they're crossing, which they shouldn't if you do the technique that I'm gonna show you, but if they are, you wanna be able to prevent that while you're on the go. So we're gonna tie this to that, and we're gonna wind it all up. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up this reel, I mean this uh, spool of 130 pound braid on my line spooler, and then we're gonna go ahead and show you how we set up our reel. All right guys, so you wanna go ahead and feed the braid through the guides of your rod. And this particular rod is a Fiblink Magic Eye rod. I normally like to use uh, rods like um, Tuna Masters or, or Rashimanu, Talavera or something like that that has a very soft tip. This tip is a little harder than I normally go to, but this was a $100 rod on Amazon. And after losing those four or $500 rods, um, I just feel like we're gonna give this a try before we go with another almost $2,000 setup to get lost. So after you feed the, the braid through the guide, what you wanna make sure is that you position the spool to rotate in the same direction in which it's gonna wind onto your reel so that you keep that same um, I guess muscle memory of the line. So you wanna make sure you feed it through the guide and you go through the proper channels so that the line doesn't kink, it doesn't bind, or it's not um, scraping against the actual guides. You know, it has roller bearings where the line is supposed to freely move or, or roll over. As you can see here, the guide, the line is rolling right through the two bearings here which means that no matter which direction the line goes, it's gonna freely spool or rotate. So you wanna make sure that as you are spooling your reel with this braid, you wanna make sure that your line spooler, which I'm using a pen one here, this has a little bit of tension here in this screw so that it doesn't, it's not too soft, but it's not too hard. That way when you're spooling your, your reel, you keep a nice tight uniform uh, spool so that when that bite happens the braid doesn't cut into itself because then you're gonna get a tangled mess and that's gonna be a big issue I'll show you as we go along so once you have all the guides all the, the braid through all the guides then you go ahead and you position your rod 
you put the line in front of the the plate, the metal plate that is here on the Shimano TLD. Most rod, I mean, most reels will have this plate that tells you where this line is supposed to be in front of. So now that we have positioned our line on our TLD 50 and we have secured it with a knot, you can use any knot you want, securing it to the reel, whatever knot you're the most comfortable with. You know, either way, as long as you knot it, you shouldn't get to that point. If you do, you're gonna lose the line regardless. So then you start really. Let me turn off this clicker. So then once you have the reel, the, the line going into your reel, then you want to make sure you have a nice tight spool. And you see we have a little bit of tension so it's not too easy. And then you always want to make sure that you squeeze your braid together. By squeezing the braid together, you keep the gaps to a minimum. And you can start Spooling a little bit quicker, keeping it in line. The trick is definitely to keep it as tight as you can possibly keep it and manage as you are spooling. And then you continue to wind your line in a nice tight pattern until you have emptied out the spool. So this is going to take a while for me to get this going. I'm going to uh, finish pulling this up and then we'll go to the next step in this process. Alright, so once you have spooled the entire reel, this is 600 yards and trust me, you think, wow, 600 yards is a lot? When that wahoo whacks that lure at 40 miles an hour and he takes off the other way, you're gonna really be happy that you have those 600 yards because you will be retrieving line for quite some time and then you're gonna be extremely happy. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is create a bimini twist loop at the end of this braid, which I'll show you how we do that also. And then we're going to attach this leader that has a Dacron splice, 130 pound mono leader with a Dacron splice. We also make these ourselves. So if you're interested in how to make these, comment below and I will definitely go through another video of how we make these leaders. You could do this, once you learn how to do the, the wind down leader with the Dacron for Wahoo or any wind down leader, then you can learn how to do uh, sword fishing leaders. You can pretty much go from there and, and go wild. So it's all the same techniques. Just, you know, longer leader, different line, different uh, tackle, but it's the same process. So let's go into our bimini twist. We're gonna start with is you wanna do a loop. And then we're gonna get this loop holding the other end. This is the bimini twist loop, and you're gonna twist it 25 times. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. So now we have twenty-five loops. You want to hold the tag end with the, the line, the main line, and then we have to find something that you can anchor this loop to because you need to keep this line tight to do this. Once you have anchored this line, you can do this on the boat. Then you want to pull this together this way, keeping the main line tight, which is this one. Let 
you keep this one tight and then you hold this one you bring it bring it bring it and as you bring it you start letting this one go and it winds itself back you, you can see that now once you have done that then you hold it here and you do a half hitch this way a half hitch this way pull then a half hitch through both together and you loop the half hitch several times I like to do three times you can choose whatever works best for you so you want to have the both yep three times one two and three and voila you cut the tag end and then you have your loop you can make this loop as big as you want this is a little bit of an exaggerated loop but it's fine it'll work for me for this particular case then we cut off the tag end lubricate this and this is never going to come apart there you go tight as a whistle Oh, I'm going to cut off our tag end. And oh yeah, that's good stuff right there. So we're going to go ahead and show you how we wind this on or we loop this onto our wind on leader. We have our Bimini twist loop. We have our Dacron loop, so you want to put the Dacron loop, or the leader loop, wind on leader loop, through and then you're going to bring the entire leader material through the loop. And then once you've done that, you're going to Bring it through one more time. And bring it, this is a double loop. Some people do triple loops. I stick to double loop, it's just as strong. These things will not break for nothing in the world. So once you pull the whole leader through, then you grab both ends, pull, and this is what you get. Wind on leader, it's ready to rock and roll. So now, pull the wind on leader onto your Shimano TLD, and it should go right through the guide. Everything should be very seamless and very easy flowing. Now that we have spooled our wind down leader, put the knot together, now we're going to put our crimps in. You could have the, the, the long crimps or the standard short crimps. I use two of them for this particular um, use. A snap swivel, rated for 250 pounds plus, and then we're going to crimp this into place. Once you have crimped this on, I like to uh, do a proof test. Make sure that it doesn't slip on you. You don't want to be out there and a 60 pound Wahoo 
slams your line and whoop, it slipped right through. That would be very, uh, very disheartening. So we have the crimp, we have the snap swivel, we have all the strength in the world. And this rod and reel setup is complete and ready for Wahoo trolling. So we're gonna show you the second steps as you go out to on the boat, how to hook up your weights, how to select your lures, how to throw the spread. But I wanna to touch base on one small detail that I just started doing now and it has helped a lot. On the bent butt, because these are bent butt rods, I got this rod with a long butt and I added baseball grip here to the butt so that when I put it in my rod holder, it gets better grip. And I want to show you guys something. Wait, this is what I cannot stress enough. When that Wahoo hits your rod, he is most likely going to take off at speeds exceeding 35, 40 miles an hour. This right here, this lanyard, nylon coated, cable crimped inside. You buy them on Amazon for about, I don't know, 15, 20 dollars a piece. This, you think will save your life? This is garbage. Do not buy this. We had a, a Wahoo hit our rod and this broke off right at the splice and $1,500 went into the ocean. So no, this is no longer what we use. Now we have upgraded. Amazon sells these also, and we're not sponsoring any of this stuff. I'm just telling you what I use. These are tree swings. They're straps. They hold up to 400 pounds. Big, nice belt buckle at the end. You could put one of these at the other end, tie this to your rod, and then tie these up to your cleats. This will make sure that your rod doesn't go into the water. So I cannot stress how important this is. This is the snap swivel that we put on our rod and reel setup. This is a 48 ounce weight. So these come in 48, 32, 24. It's a bullet weight. This is gonna go attached to this snap swivel at this end when you are already set up for the troll. So you are on the water, you got the boat in, you have the rod and everything set up. You're gonna put the weight onto the rod and reel. This weight has a snap swivel. I mean, a, yeah, snap swivel at the other end. Now to this end, you need to attach another 25 feet of 150 to 200 pound leader monofilament this is going to attach here uh, 25 feet out you're going to attach your lure now here's the tricky part so you have everything set up you have your lures they sell these kits on amazon also they sell them just about any um, online tackle shop which it comes with the weights comes with the leaders it comes with certain lures um it's it's a nice kit for the weights and the leaders because it already comes pre-assembled you could literally do it all yourself if you choose to i, I kind of do it all myself but i wanted to try these out and see how they how they were i did it more more for the lures than i did for the the rest of the stuff because you could buy it all separately but these do not come in that kit these lures are weighted lures they're specifically for high speed trolling you want to have double hooks offset hooks like this they swim better you want to make sure that they're stealthy bullet bullet feathers and if they have a skirt with the feather it's i've had really good luck with these so you want to make sure it's wire as you can see here some people go with 200 pound fluorocarbon yeah wahoo have teeth they will hit this the same that they hit the fluorocarbon i can guarantee you you will have better chances of not losing the fish with wire than with fluorocarbon but you could test both out and make your decision. This goes at the very end of the 25 foot leader 
And as you're putting this into the water, this goes out first. You unwind it, 25 foot leader, unwind it, weight, rod, lock, set your drag. Drag setting is extremely important. You wanna have enough drag that it doesn't free spool while you're going 15 to 20 knots in the water, but you don't wanna have more than that because if, it's too, if the drag is too tight, the wahoo hits it by your rod, or it's gonna snap your line, or you know, you're gonna lose the fish. So make sure your drag setting is properly set. So you see this, this is 150 yards. So this line, this spool, this is another spool that I have for trolling. This is the setup. This spool has a black Sharpie mark on the actual braid at 150 yards. Once I reach that 150 yard mark, I tighten the drag and I leave it right there. I put three rods out when I'm trolling for high speed trolling for Wahoo, 150, 125, and 100. 150 is the center rod. This one's gonna be in the center of your boat. That's the long, the long line. You're gonna let this one go 150. This is the one that goes out first. Then the 125 is gonna be either to your right or to your left, whichever one you prefer, starboard or port. And then that's the one that's gonna go out next after you let out the long line. Then me, I put this 125 on the left and then I put the 100 on the right. So then what I do is I usually put a neutral color such as green and blues with no white or blacks in my center rod, long line all the way back on the lures. And then on my starboard side, I go with lights and on the port side, I go with darks. Now what do I mean by lights and darks? Put that right there for now. This is a dark. So you can see it's purple and black with some silver in it. This is an amazing lure. This is what you want to use, purple and black. This will go on your port side, darks on the port side. Now let me show you what I mean by lights. These are lights, pink and white, blue and white, same setup, offset hooks, wire. These go on your starboard side. Then, Neutral, what I consider neutral, blues and greens, mahi colors. I usually put this one or something similar to this one on the long line on the back. What that does is, depending on the overcast that you have that day, it, you don't know if it's, if it's gonna, you know, if it's cloudy, you don't know if the waho sees the dark bait or the light bait first, or maybe he's attracted to the light bait and as he's coming up to hit it, he sees the dark bait and he goes and hits the dark bait. It gives him options. If you go with all the same color, and he doesn't see it as you swing by, you miss the fish. If you give them options, you give them more options for them to strike and see the lure as it goes by at 15, 20 knots per hour. So it's very important that you, you know, switch up your baits and, and go with what works for you. Um, another trick is as you're trolling, a lot of people like to troll north to south and they hit the, the north to south band on the water column you know, 100, 150 feet, whatever, wherever the, you know, your, your research has taken you to. I have learned that it's better, you get better chances of hitting Oahu if you actually go east to west, east to west, going north to south. So you're doing an S, whether you're going from south to north and north to south, you cover S, you cover more water columns, different depths, and you get a better chance of getting struck by the Oahu. So those are very, you know, uh, important details when you're trolling, you know, just break the habit of what you normally do and, and do something different and it'll mostly, you know, guarantee you a fish, almost guarantee. Also very important, rough reports, R-O-F-F-S, look it up online, you get those rough reports, they're about $70, those go a long way. You can see where the water concentration, the chlorophyll concentrations, plankton levels, you can see where the water breaks between blue and green and, and then you find the structure and you can pretty much know where the Wahoo are gonna be and you could troll that area nonstop. The research, when Wahoo trolling is so important, I usually spend the whole entire night before Wahoo trolling up and I'm out on the water by 6 a.m. already trolling, ready to smash a Wahoo. And when we've caught them, it's always been, you know, right around the eight to nine o'clock in the morning time frame, and you're in at noon, ready to go, fish clean, 
it's a good day. So guys, that's pretty much how to do it. If you have any questions, if there's anything that was uh, unclear in the whole entire process, please feel free to drop a, a message below, comment, let me know what may have been confusing, or if you need to see something in more detail, I'll be more than happy to break this down for you into further detail. Please let us know if there's anything else that you would like to see. We would love to bring it to you guys. Thank you for watching. Stay extreme.